Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 32. Now they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Now, I think any of us in the presence of Jesus would be amazed, but can you imagine what it must have been like uh, to be one of his disciples, to see what they saw, to hear what they heard, you know, to just be there physically in the presence of Jesus? That must have been a wonderful and amazing thing, but they're about to hear something that is uh, kind of scary. They're going to hear something that is you know, uh, kind of frightening to think about. And he goes on there in verse 33, he says, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed uh, to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Here we see that Jesus is describing himself, and he says that all these terrible and horrible things are about to happen as they go up to Jerusalem. And you can imagine that maybe the, the, the normal human response from other people might say, well, let's just don't go. Let's just stay right here. Let's don't go up to Jerusalem. But you know, you know the story. You know that, that they continue on their journey, uh, and, and they continue doing uh, what they need to do. But you can see that there is some frightening things that are said here. They're going to happen to Jesus. That's going to happen to their leader. That's going to happen to the Messiah. And as you think about that, you, you look at and see that he was going to be betrayed uh, to the religious leaders. He was going to be betrayed to these chief priests, to these scribes. And they're going to condemn him. They're going to condemn him to death, deliver him to the Gentiles. And then notice the disrespect uh, and the pain that's going to come. It, it says that they're going to mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. You know, all those evil and horrible things, that's what they're going to do to the Christ. But then it says this. This is wonderful. This is powerful. This, this overcomes all of that. This is the third day he will rise again. This is a both scary and yet wonderful statement that Jesus makes here before his disciples. And it's something that as they are going up, uh, no, up, to, up to Jerusalem, uh, that they are hearing and they're trying to comprehend. Now, in this, uh, we see in the next few verses, we're going to see that, that James and John, they have something on their mind. They have something on their heart that they want to bring before Jesus. It says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Now, every time that I read that verse, it sounds like my children. They want, they want to come and say, Daddy, you know, I want to ask you something. And it's because they want a favor. They want something. Maybe it's candy. Maybe it's ice cream. Maybe it's pizza. Whatever it is. You know, maybe they want to go to the park or whatever they want. You know, they want to ask you something, but they want to kind of set me up first. They want to kind of get me prepared uh, for the question that they're about to ask. So here they say, you know, we want you to, you to grant for us, you know, whatever we ask. And he said to them, what do you want me uh, to do for you? They said to him, grant us that we may sit on your right hand and, on, and the other on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, we are able. So Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink the cup that I drink. And with the baptism I am baptized with, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left side, left is not mine to give, but it's for those for whom uh, it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. They hear James and John, you know, uh, they, they're one in this position of glory. They want to sit on his right hand and on his left. Uh, you know, uh, when Jesus comes into his glory. And I, 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 you see here that they're talking about something that is very physical. But Jesus is talking about something that is, that is far different than, than what they can ever imagine. I want you to, to imagine this. What, ha what would happen if, you know, here Jesus is going to the cross and it's James and John on his right and the left. That, that's a different scenario there. Uh, you know, but it's one of those things that here, James and John don't know the magnitude of what they're saying. They don't know, uh, you know, how deep this is going to go. Uh, you know, Jesus is going to, uh, to tell them, he says, you do not know what you ask. And that's something that uh, when Jesus speaks, they need to listen. We need to listen. Because to be a Christian, to be a follower of God is a wonderful and great thing. But with it, it's going to come suffering. It's going to come persecution. Uh, the disciples knew, uh, uh, knew that better than anyone, or we'd find that out better than anyone. And you see here that these two disciples, 
uh, in asking this question, did not fully comprehend all that Jesus was about to do. Even that Jesus just said, I'm going to be delivered up to, you know, to be crucified. Uh, they did not fully get it. And for us today, I hope that we get it. I hope that when we look back into the word, that we see that, that Jesus Christ came this earth willingly. That out of love, that he positioned himself and, uh, and he gave up his life. You know, he gave it up for you and for me. Uh, and we could not have done that for ourselves. He did that for us because he was the only one that could. And we look at this and we understand that as Christians now, we are to be following after him. Uh, we are to be going the way that he would go. And to understand that as we do so, uh, there are going to be wonderful, wonderful things. Uh, but there's also going to be some things that are going to be not so comfortable in this life. But all those things, if we will endure, are just getting us ready for that eternal home uh, with him in heaven. And so uh, for us today, as we look here at this, uh, at this lesson, you know, let's not be afraid to walk with Jesus. As they went up to that city and he told us horrible things, let's keep pressing on with Jesus in everything we do. And then let's focus on the true, uh, you know, uh, you know, mission of Christ and, and mission that we are to, uh, to be a part of um, as Christians. And let's live that out each and every day, knowing that one day we will have that home with him. And so today, let's be faithful, let's stand fast, and let's live our lives to be pleasing to him.